Then there's Sonic Labyrinth. This one experiments with a 3D perspective, but fails. The controls are messy, Sonic's walk is tedious, and doing the spin move only sends him ramming into a wall. Unless you get down just right. Anyway, these are portable games. What do you expect? This is back when the convenience of taking a game with you on a trip often meant compromising its playability. Then there's Sonic R on the Sega Saturn, which I've also been told is terrible. Oh man, they're right. It's basically a racing game, sort of a shitty version of Mario Kart. The steering is so unresponsive that I can barely stay on the track. Oh, come on, come on! And I'm always afraid that's going to glitch out, that I'm going to fall through the boundaries and into the unprogrammed area of Limbo. Another one I've been told about is Sonic Shuffle on Dreamcast. That's right, the last of the Sega consoles, and a good console to go out with. But the same can't be said for this game. After you get through about 10 minutes of story footage and tiresome load screens, the game finally begins, only to bombard you with more text. Just as I thought, it's a board game video game, with some mediocre minigames in between players' turns. Basically, this is Sega's take on Mario Party, but unfortunately, it didn't turn out as well. Another big request is Shadow the Hedgehog on the Nintendo GameCube. A Sega game on a Nintendo console? Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria! Sega and Nintendo were the biggest competitors of my generation, but times have changed. I don't even know who Shadow is, and when did characters in Sonic games start carrying guns? Once again, you have to sit through a movie before the game starts. It's pretty spectacular, but why is it always like this now? Is that what kids do nowadays, sit around and watch video games? You take control of Shadow, with Sonic following behind. You run, you jump, you shoot. It's pretty self-explanatory. I think it's much more fun than the other games, but I find it a little tough to avoid losing my rings all the time. This homing attack tends to get me killed, and I keep falling down pits. Other than that, I don't have much to say about it. I feel like I just awoke from a frozen sleep. Last I knew, Sonic games were in 2D, Nintendo and Sega were rivals, guns were for Contra, Sonic Nemesis was called Dr. Robotnik, now he's going by Dr. Eggman, Diddy Daddy, villain formerly known as whatever. What the hell happened here? This is about as new as I'll go. Sorry, I'm going back to NES. That's what I know best. One of my biggest NES requests since day one is Where's Waldo? First, you have to be familiar with the books. They were incredible. As a kid, I stared at these pages for hours. The illustrations were amazing. There was so much going on, it could keep your eyes busy exploring for a long time. Of course, the objective was to find Waldo amongst other hidden things. Well, how do you take this and turn it into an NES game? This is what happens. It's as if the pages of the book have been chewed up, digested, and shot out an 8 bit ass. How can you find Waldo in this? Where the fuck is Waldo? He doesn't even know where he is. And that's all you do. You just move the square around the screen and hit the button if you think Waldo is in that area. Even when I do find him, I still don't know which one he's supposed to be. It's really not hard anyway. You can just keep trying every space on the screen until you win. The only thing that happens if you pick the wrong area, you lose time on the timer. But it still seems like a better option to guess your way through the game rather than actually trying to find Waldo with your own eyes. In between the stages, you're forced into watching Waldo walk from one place to the next. And he never walks in a straight line, he just wanders all over the place. Like he doesn't have a clue where he's going. Why do we need this cutscene anyway? Couldn't we just go straight to the next stage? There's a few stages that are different, like finding Waldo in the dark, a crappy slot machine, and one of those indescribable shit shows that reminds me of that part in Terminator 2 on Game Boy where you have to connect the wires. Or that fucking nightmare in Bill and Ted! And once you've completed all the stages, Waldo goes to the moon and the game's over. I finished the whole game in six minutes! Imagine buying this piece of shit for 50 bucks. Nowadays, releasing a game this short would never be excusable. Well, anyway, we have a lot more games to get through, so stay tuned for part two. I'm gonna go get the games.